Let's start with an easy one. Okay. Uh, what did the Buddhist monk say to the man at the hot dog stand? <laughs> okay. Make me one with everything. Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> Some topics are hard to approach. Either the subjects are inaccessible, or people are uncomfortable discussing them. So we found those subjects in person, rented a space in Los Angeles, and invited our audience and strangers to come in and ask them anything. My name is Gil Kay. I'm a Buddhist priest. I'm here to answer some questions. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Gil Kay. Nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> Is there any life form that you would like to reincarnate into? When I was uh, younger, I just used to joking and say, I want to be dolphin, and mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> Regarding uh, rebirth and like reincarnation, what are your beliefs on that? We say maybe the person that you're not getting along with could have been your mother in, in a previous life. Um, that's um, one example of the expression but that's also an important way for us to look at other beings. Yeah, those are really good answers. So it's more of a way of living. Like if you look at reincarnation as being a possibility, it kind of inspires compassion, correct? Yeah. Okay. I've read that Buddhists believe that suffering is necessary for life. Mm -hmm. What is an instance in your life that you've suffered from that you had to learn about? Mm. Thank you for your questions, yeah. Yes, we say suffering is essential. Um, I mean, even without going to sort of make it sound like Buddhist teaching, I mean, those who have gone experienced the pains, uh, difficulties, uh, understand from with their own experience the pains and sufferings of others too. I lost my mother when I was 12 uh, from uh, stomach cancer. So I kind of had a Actually, to be honest, sort of a grudge <laughs> to my own tradition. Um, like, why is Buddhism supposed to liberate us from these pains and suffering? And why is it causing so much pains and suffering in my family? We compared it to the mud in a lotus pond. <laughs> Sorry, going to, back to the Buddhist teaching. So the beautiful lotus flower is often symbolized. We say it as a symbol of Buddhist teaching, the Buddhist wisdom. And lotus flower, beautiful lotus flower, only comes out of this muddy water. And if not muddy, uh, this wisdom would not yeah. uh, manifest. What are your thoughts on forgiveness? I myself, uh, right, was married and I went through divorce. I always felt like what I valued and treasured were somehow taken away. And being a Buddhist, being exposed to Buddhist teaching, I fully, fully understood it was because of my attachment and because of my delusions, because of whatever it was that I was supposed to, supposed to be entitled to. And that was truly, fully shocked me. But nonetheless, I had a hard time um, achieving that sort of forgiveness. You expect life to turn out one way and right. you make an idea, you see your friends with their, you know, their parents, their cousins, their aunts, families yeah. and friends. And when your life is a little different than that, it, and you're young, it's kind of hard to process. So that was a perfect answer. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Do you believe there are truly evil people out there in the world? And do you think they can ever redeem themselves? The evil is um, a war, I guess we contemplate quite often. There are so much more that I am failing to see. And there's the recognition that how did that form of struggle, uh, suffering, came to take form or shape. Um, I have a son <laughs> uh, with uh, Down syndrome. So there was one crime in Japan where uh, one person came and stabbed a bunch of uh, people who were in the facility. This person who stabbed the people with disability uh, I think he was convinced that people with disabilities should not exist in this world. If it was my own son, and if this happened, I just 
forget about the Buddhist part as a as a parent, uh, as a father. I I think it would be diff- very difficult to do that. Um, but still, I can't define the person. And after all, what do I know about him? Uh, so that's that's the best I I guess I can, I can do. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have anything to say to someone who's struggling with finding peace in this world? People used to tell me that when you're in a dark tunnel, there's always the end of the dark tunnel. But then I think what kind of helped me was I was sort of deceiving myself with this clear image of this bright light coming at the end of the tunnel. (laughs) But it was more like finding the light however small, whether it's a candlelight small or something small, uh, in this darkness, it's a duality. We're in misfortune and there's something else waiting for us. It would be nice to just know more from you and like listen to more of what what you have to say. I just want to say thank you. I feel like very calmed. Can I give you a handshake? Of course. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice to meet can you. I? Oh, I don't know if I can go around. Oh, okay. Handshake. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice meeting thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Please comment below what you thought and if there's any other episodes you'd like to see. And we hope to catch you next time.